in this day and time, uh, they ask for a resume. They ask for a resume when, when you're applying for, uh, for a job. You know, well, well, let me see your resume. Even when you've been on the job for a while, they, they, they get a resume uh, uh, you know, to look uh, and find out what, you, what you've been doing, you know. Uh, sometimes you you know your resume changes and you have to go and update your your resume even as a volunteer worker they they ask for uh, resumes and uh, we normally submit a resume uh, and and we need to understand what that resume is and what it does what is it saying it's a document created and used to to as a person to present uh, maybe our background it might show your skills and accomplishments, but but we want this resume to show our beliefs and and and, and who we put forth forth and and who we stand on. In short, a resume tells us who we are, or maybe I should say, or who we supposed to be. Amen. Amen. You know, as Amen. an epistle, you know, you know, Paul wrote in epistle, and epistle was nothing but a a, a series of letters. And, and, and I mean, I asked you, when was the last time you received a letter other than a bill or, or, or somebody trying to sell you something? Mm -hmm. We we no longer get letters anymore. Your letters were something very dear and very important to us. So Paul, in his doing his incarceration, you had time. He all he did was wrote. He wrote letters, and he would write a letter and say, "Okay, this is the letter to the people at Corinth." This is a letter to the people here, but you, you know we wrote letters in order to uh, get to the people that we were trying to connect with. But in this particular uh, epistle, Paul reminds us that uh, that uh, that uh, we, instead of having a, a, a written letter, that the letter that we do is written in our hearts, and. There, people ought to be able to read us as a letter. In other words, you ought to be able to look at the way you're walking. You ought to be able to look at the way you're talking. You ought to look at the way you're living, the way you're giving. That's your letter. That's what people look at. That's your resume. That's what people are looking at. Uh, and when we look back at uh, uh, in the time, in early times, they, you know, it was manifested that and declared a uh, epistle that Christ, Christ before Christ came, and when Moses went up to receive the uh, the Ten Commandments, if you can remember, Moses came down, and that was a a, a glow about, it. And, and, and it was a different deal because people couldn't understand; they couldn't even stand to look at him; they were blinded. And see what happened during that time is that that. that the resume that we have is not is not going to be written in ink and written in stone like it was in Moses. See, in that time, Moses' time, people knew didn't know what the end was going to be because Jesus had not come. But now, the the resume that we have should be different because Jesus has come and Jesus has told us and and led us and told us what what the end will be if we lead a certain life. And so when when I when I think about that, I I, I I I'm I have a question that comes before us, and, and I want you I want you to think about it. If I ask the question of how many Christians do I have under the sound of my voice, everybody hand was gonna go up. Amen. Amen. You agree with that? Amen. Everybody would be a part. But if I ask you, if God put you on trial this morning. Well, being a Christian, would there be enough evidence to convict you? Huh. Hmm. You know, see, it's easy to say that I'm a Christian. Yeah. 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 You know, we throw that word around real, you know, just casually, oh, I'm this and I'm that. But, it, 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 you know, the old saying said that, 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 you know, if you're a Christian, you're saying you're Christ like. And that, that, that I, I'm inviting everything that Christ was about. Well, uh, then it ought to show up. You know, it ought to be in everything that we do. You know, as uh, you know, I, I, I can hear you now. You said, Pastor, what, what are you talking about? In so many words, I've stated that you may be the only Bible 
that somebody may ever read. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. We gain this trust through Christ. It's not everything that we've done. We, you know, but see, we we, we got to understand it because see, it, it's nothing that we've done. It's because Jesus came and God blessed us in order to be back with Him. Because see, you know, one thing, don't get it twisted. Because I don't want us to believe that and live as if we've already obtained. You know, you got that crown. Some people have already put the robe on. And they don't try it on their robe and they got their crown. And they got their suitcase packed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> the lady was uh, uh, getting ready to... Uh, uh, hold up, hold up. She stayed in business. Uh, getting ready to uh, check her bags in. And, and she came to the guy at, at, at the gate, at Heaven's Gate, getting ready to get on the bus. They say, oh, she had three or four guys behind her with suitcases, dragging all the stuff she had. And she said, well, uh, 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 well, uh, I, 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 need, I, I, uh, I need to see my name on, on the list. And they said, well, ma'am, I, I, you know, I don't, I don't see your name. Uh, well, uh, uh, well, well, I, I know I, I, you know, I, I, I went to church. It could be, I sang in the choir. It could be, hey, hey, I, I held a position. But see, God is looking at us for our resume to be pure. We ought to be like Christ in all that we do. We just can't be like that sometimes. And then all of a sudden we turn around and we are something else. You know, see, uh, in that, in that uh, trip with Moses coming down, not knowing what the end was going to be, but people still believed in what was happening because it was something that was so glorious. Now, you just think about that. If it was so glorious a time that when Moses came down and brought those Ten Commandments, but see, you got to understand the Ten Commandments was given, that was a sentence to death. Yeah, we were still condemned to die when the Ten Commandments were here. But, however, when when Jesus came, Jesus was a, 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 a something that told us about life. You know, our sufficiency is not in us, but our sufficiency is in God. We are also made able ministers, because see, my Bible says that we are all called to be ministers of God. Amen. Amen. So we ought to be able to, to uh, represent because, see, you are a crisis ambassador. Everything that you do, you go out and you ought to be spreading the word. The thing about it, it should not just happen inside of the, the four walls of the church. Now, that's one thing that Zoom allows. Is it allows us to reach out into the community and touch people that maybe we've never seen before. Because so many people say, well, well, I can't go to church because I don't have this to wear. And I, I don't have my seat. God says, come as you are. He wasn't talking about clothes anyway. He was talking about your spirit. Come as you are. You know, hey, say some people want, ah, well, I got to wait till I, I get right. You, you won't get right. You know, we say, you know I'm saying? get right, church, and let's go home. We, we, we striving to get right. But we mm -hmm. ought to continue to, to walk in the spirit of God and let God lead us in all that we do. You say, now, nah, if the... Uh, but see, that administration that Moses gave was a administration of death. It was written in stones. And, and, and just think about how glorious it was when he brought that down from the mountain. How the people, how they had already clowned and they had even made a, a golden calf to worship because they thought Moses had left them alone. But when Moses came down and that, and that glare, that glow was all about it, they knew that it was something from God. Well, how much more should we glorify in Christ? Knowing what you know now, knowing that, that you have a place, knowing that there's a, a home over the mountain, knowing that there's a mansion waiting on you, knowing that Jesus have gone to prepare that place for you. And see, that's where we enter today's text. And when it starts at that level, say, seeing that, that we have such hope. Now, seeing that you have hope, seeing that you have the hope of all of this, then there ought to be a boldness. I ought to be able to speak, Lord, I, I, hey, I know what God can do for me. I know that he can heal the sick. 
I know that he can raise that because you, you, you've read it in the word. I know that all the things that he's done, I know that it's there because you have seen it. You've heard it. It's happened before you. And so there ought to be a boldness in your speech. You know, and not as Moses because there's no more veil over your face. You know what the end is going to be. You know, some people say, I'm going to run to see what the end will be. You know, sometimes you just can't stop in the middle of it. You got to keep going. It, 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 it's not a, 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 a sprint, but it, it's a marathon. You know, we're going to have to go through some things. You know, we, we, we might have to go through a little illness. We, we, we go through some heartaches. We go through some trials and tribulations. But if you stay in course, because you know what the end going to be. You know, like if I know what's waiting for me at the finish line, then, hey, it makes it easier to run this race. And he says, not as Moses. Moses didn't have that. He said, but their minds were blinded. They were blinded, 14th verse, until this day. Even when we go back and read Moses back in the day, you're reading a lot of people that's a blinded people, not knowing what the end is going to be because they didn't know that Jesus was here, uh, had come. They were uh, banking on the expectancy of Jesus coming. But see, the New Testament did away with that veil. It made everything clear. It made everything different. We no longer have to have, to have someone else to go in and pray for me. I don't have to have a priest that go in the holies of holies, but I can pray for myself now because I know that, that Jesus has something better for me. He said, but in the 15th, but, but even until this day, when Moses is read, the veil is up on their hearts. It's still there on their hearts because there's an expectation. But with us, it's a realization that Christ has blessed us. And he said, and nevertheless, we shall turn to the Lord. The veil is taken away. When we have Jesus, Jesus took away that veil. No longer. No longer have anything in there that keeps us from, from uh, 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 not believing. He said, you know, we don't have to look at your tablets. We don't have to look at anything. He said, now the Lord is that spirit. You know, we have the spirit. Well, it said, the spirit of the Lord is there, there is liberty. He set us free from, from all the things that we had to worry. He, we shouldn't have to worry about anything because we know who controls all that. You know, he set us free from, from, from having to rely on, on man. We can rely on God, rely on God. You know, he, he, even when we, we don't know what to pray for, the spirit is there praying for us, standing in our stead. You know, when, when we when we in, in our weakness, He's, he's our strength because we know who he is and we know who we are. Now, uh, now uh, knowing that, that, but we all, you know, with an open face, you know, as we're looking in a glass, you know, you look in a glass, you see your own uh, reflection, but that reflection should be of a glory of the Lord. It should be somebody that, that's expecting God. You know, we, we have this deal we call bigger. You know, you believe in God's grace, expecting results. See, when you pray, sometimes we pray, we go to that altar, we get up, we take everything to the altar, bring all your cares to the altar and do what, leave them there. But we get up and we take everything right back with us. But you got to believe in God's grace, you know, in the grace of God that has covered us, in the spirit that prays for us instead of what we are, that he's going to work it out somehow. I don't know when. I don't know where, I don't know how, but I know that he's going to do it. You got to be able to understand and know that. He said, therefore, seeing that we have this ministry, uh, that we have received mercy, that we should not faint. We shouldn't faint because God has given us this ministry. We ought to be with boldness, but we have renounced. And he tells us now, your resume should be like this. It says that you ought to renounce the hidden Things of dishonesty. You got to put those things behind you. You got to put deceitfully, deceitfulness behind you. You know, he say when, when you're walking with God, it's got to be all true. Let your yeas be yea, let your nays be nay. You know, got to understand who God is. And, and God is going to hold all of us accountable 
That's one thing about it, that everything we do in this body, we're going to have to account for it. And we're going to have to understand that God is looking at everything that we do. He said, then it says that not walking in dishonesty, not walking in craftiness. We, those are not the things of God. You know, we have to put those things behind us, not handling the word of God deceitfully. See, man now has changed God. We want to change God's word to, to work out and mean what we want it to mean, when we want it to mean, that helps us. But that's not what God's word is for. He said, God's word changes not. Uh, you know, his, his word is, is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. So we can't allow uh, uh, man so many times people have used the word of God to put people in slavery and bondage and everything else. You know, we get the word of God and we beat, you know, take the word of God to beat up on other people. That's not what it's for. The word of God is, is, is it said what? The spirit of the Lord, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. So there should be a freedom. You know, we should be able to manifest the truth and go along living a life that's pleasing unto God. You know, we, we, we have to come out of the things that, that, that we uh, live in in this world. You know, it makes it hard for me sometimes to, to look at some things, some ministers on TV and I hear and what they're doing and what they're saying and, 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 and how they are using God's word in order to make money. And, 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 but the thing about it is that God says that, that if, if those are the things that you have lived for, then there is no reward for you in heaven, but you're going to have to, you're going to have to pay for all of those things that you do. So your resume as a Christian, you know, as we walk in these, uh, you know, through these 40 days of Lent, and you know, about sacrifice and, 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 and the little sacrifice that we're doing is nothing. But you think about the sacrifice that Jesus made as he was walking through this thing, knowing all the time that I'm one day closer to the cross, knowing that I'm going to be one day closer to being nailed uh, to a cross and one day closer to put a, a, a thorn in my, a, a crown of thorns on my head and, and all, you know, he all, he knew all of these things beforehand, but yet he didn't stop. I wonder sometimes if we knew uh, when exactly we were going to die and, 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 and when things were going to happen and how we were going to go, how would we react? Would we still do the things that we do now? Or would we uh, walk a little different? Or would we go another direction? You know, like, uh, uh, you know, one deal says that when he was going through he said, I must go through Samaria. You know, he had to go through some things because he knew different things were going to happen. He knew where things were going to be, where, where people were going to meet him, where we're going to be with things. Well, we know where God is leading us to. He's leading us to the cross, but we got to walk a certain way. It's a prepared place for a prepared people. And until we are preparing ourselves for the Lord, you know, you know we, we have to continue to learn continue to read the Bible, continue to embrace God's word, continue to love one another. Because see, you can't love God and not love your fellow man. See, these are the things that we have to follow. Your resume ought to be a resume of love. You know, love for your fellow man, love for your God, love for your church, love for everybody all around us. And if we want this resume to speak for us, then we are the epistle. You are that letter that everybody's reading. They're reading you, you know, because in this day and time, I guess Paul was ahead of his time because see, now we have, you know, we have uh, all these cell phones and everything. Nobody reads the Bible anymore. One young man said he was in there with his grandmother. He said, my grandmother, I don't want to go to church anymore because when I'm in church, all I see is these people playing, playing games on their phone. And had to understand, no, they're not playing games on their phone. They're, uh, they have the Bible on their phone, you know. So let, instead of being that phone, be the resume 
that people are around. You be that epistle. You be that letter. You be that person that people are reading in order to make it into the kingdom. And we say it all in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And let the church say, Amen. 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 Amen.